you're looking at it from a standpoint of you want to get better as a player. What are areas that you value in players? What do you think makes a good player? Anybody else? Yes? Confidence. Confidence. Okay. Any players? Any players that you think resemble that? That that exemplify that? Um, players that are not afraid to take another one on one, like Messi, Ronaldo. Messi, Ronaldo. All right. How, how does how does this build? All right. Messi's a good one. How, how do you how do you develop that? And that's a good. You would want that in a player, and I agree. You want somebody to 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 have confidence, to be assertive to be aggressive in their play. One of the things that we talk about here at the University of Louisville is we want to be the aggressors on the field. We want to be the ones to be assertive. Well, what we know is this, that if we are tentative in any way, it's likely that we're not going to be able to be productive. It's likely that we're not going to make anything good happen. And in the end, we're probably going to be a little bit late in making plays. The confidence that comes in the ability to, to step forward, to have the courage to make plays, to be assertive, to be aggressive, to step forward. How do you develop that? Any thoughts? One is, it starts with your attitude of, of not being fearful of making mistakes. As soon as we start focusing on mistakes, as soon as we start focusing on what if this happens, now we become tentative. Now we become fearful. Now we're unsure. Now we don't want to take that step forward. All right? The, the mistakes in games are information. They're not final. All right? It's just a moment. And in that moment, it tells us something, that if something doesn't go right, that we need to fix it. We need to change it. We need to do something different next time. That's all mistakes are is they end up being information for us to do something different. If we're constantly fearful of making mistakes, we'll never get beyond it. And it's so important when we're, when we're playing that we're not worried about making mistakes, but we're concentrating on making plays. And the mistakes that come simply give us information on how to make the play the next time, on what we need to do and what we need to do to change to make it better. All right? That's part of growth. There was a book written uh, called Mindset by this uh, Dr. Carol Dweck. And she talked about the two different kinds of mindsets. All right? We grow up having one or two different kinds. One is a, a, a growth mindset. And a growth mindset is very important. The other is a, a mindset where we're limited, where we have a, a, a certain amount of, of ability growing up and never have anything more than that. We're born with a certain amount of ability. It's a fixed mindset. Here's the difference. If you have a fixed mindset, that means you're, you, you're either talented or not talented. Either you have it or you don't have it. Now, if we have that kind of mindset, when obstacles come, when challenges come, when somebody says, here, try this, and you have a fixed mindset, many times we say, I don't think I want to try that. Because fear of, if I don't get it right, what it tells me is I'm no good, that I'm not talented, that I don't have the ability. And then you stop trying. You no longer take the effort. You no longer take the risk. Whereas if you have a growth mindset, what we know is that it's not necessarily whether I get it right or not, but if I put the time in and I try enough, that I'll continue to get better at it. I'll continue to grow. That it's not about getting it right or wrong, it's about continuing to work at it. That if I work at it long enough, I'll continue to get better. And then the challenges are, boy, you start rubbing your hands and saying, oh, well, I can't wait to get at that challenge. I can't wait because I know that challenge means I'm going to get better as long as I work at it. Same thing in the game. When those opportunities come, do we step back from them or step forward? What does Messi do? And he's looking for those opportunities. Does he always get them right? No. There's a commercial Michael Jordan had about, I don't know if you remember it, about how many shots that he had to win games that he missed. That he missed. But all it did was keep him going 
and looking for the next shot, and how many did he make? So many more. So many more. All right, confidence. What else? What else makes a good player? Yes? A good touch. Okay. Tell me about a player that has a good touch. Iniesta? Anybody else? Says Fabregas. Fabregas? Anybody else? Yep, those guys for sure. How, how do you think Iniesta and Fabregas developed a good touch? Do you, do you think they touched the ball quite a bit? There's no substitution for that. They built a relationship with the ball. And there's no substitute for that. The contact. If you want to build a relationship with somebody, you have to have contact. The ball's no different. You want to be friends with the ball. You want to make the ball do what you want, when you want. You have to have contact with it. The more contact you have, the more comfortable you're going to be with the ball. The more comfortable you are with the ball, the more technical you're going to be especially in tight situations, no space, where things are moving real fast, that's where those guys are at their best. How many people does it take to develop touch? One. 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 You and the ball. That's it. Going out in the backyard, in the parking lot, in the driveway, Sometimes in the basement, downstairs, wherever it might be, you and the ball and contact will develop touch. The more you do it, the better you get. There's no substitute for that. And again, this many times is a difference between good and great players, their ability with the ball. When we go out and we watch and we evaluate and we're recruiting, there's a few things that we notice right away. Their comfort level with the ball, so important. Their ability to play with their head up because they're so comfortable with the ball, critical. And the guys that we mentioned, the best in the world, they play like it's easy, their head is up because they're so comfortable with the ball at their feet. When we're fighting the ball, when that first touch comes in and we're struggling to get it under control and we have to take two or three or four to get it, it makes it very difficult to make the next play. There's simply no substitute for touching. What else? Confidence, touch, two very good ones. Anything else? Yes? Creativity. Creativity? Anybody that resembles that? Torres? Yeah. Torres? Anybody else? May not be the most creative. Who else? Messi. Maradona. Maradona. There we go. Mario's favorite player. He says the best ever. There's some argument there. Hands down. Hands down the best ever. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And, and you know what? If. Uh, if Luis was in here, he would second that. Yes, he would second that. Creativity. Creativity comes from being able also the confidence to take risk, to try things, to allow yourself the ability to do it. All right? And that comes from confidence. Anything else in a player? Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Who? Who? Who do you think a good example of hard work as a player? Uh, Dirk Cow. Dirk Cow. Good call. Yeah, he likes that. Anybody else? Michael Bradley. Michael Bradley's got a good work rate. Rooney. Rooney. He's got a good work rate. Yes. Michael Essien. Yes. Michael Essien. Those are good ones. Those are very good ones. And and there is there is a a part of it that that regardless of how talented and skillful that you may be, if we're not willing to put in the work, it's very difficult to be successful. Or at least reach your potential. Because in the end, 
in the end, it really isn't a measurement of how you are next to the guy next to you, compared to the guy next to you. We're comparing you with yourself and your growth and your development and how good you can be. And, and unless you're working hard at it, unless you're putting in the time, unless you put in the effort, your growth is not going to be maximized. You're not going to reach your potential. So the hard work is important when you're putting a team together and you want to maximize the ability of the team. But as an individual, when we go out and we're recruiting, we're looking for the guys that are working hard, that are putting in the effort. Not just when it's easy and convenient, but all the time. And you know what? We're going to end up calling up the coach and we're going to ask them, tell me what it's like in training. Tell me what their grades are like. Tell me how hard they work in all areas of their life. Because there's so many people that will put in an effort when it serves them, when they feel like it, when it's easy. To be a champion, to be at your best, you need to do it all the time, not just when it's comfortable and easy. There's a story about uh, Charles Barkley. You guys probably know him as a commentator. I got to see him play. But there is a story about him when, when Michael Jordan finished a golf outing and he was sitting there with Lou Holtz, who was this, this uh, great coach from Notre Dame, football coach. And they were sitting there after this charity golf outing. And uh, Michael Jordan talk, you know, turns to Lou and he says, Lou, you and I are the two of the few people in this whole clubhouse here that have won championships. And then he turns to, to Charles and he points at Charles. He said, see him, he'll never win one. Charles, being the person he is, says, Michael, what are you calling me out for here in public? What are you doing? He says, what do you mean I'll never win a championship? He says, Michael, how much are you? He says, uh, Charles, how much do you weigh? Charles said, I weigh 30 pounds over, but we're in a lockout right now in the NBA. Once that lockout ends, there's three weeks to get ready for the season. I will cut the weight. I'll be ready for the season. Don't you worry about it. And Michael said, Charles, that's exactly why you will never win a championship. Because you don't win it when it's easy and convenient. You win it every single day of your life. And he said, furthermore, Charles, he said, when you're playing a team sport, you got to lead and inspire and motivate other people to be at their best. And if you're not doing it every single day of your life, they're not going to be inspired to do it as well. Michael was right. He never won it. But again, it's too many times when it's easy and convenient, but will you do it when it's hard, when somebody's not looking? Will you put in the effort when you're down a goal or two? Or even still, when you're up three goals, are you still working as hard? Because again, the measurement isn't how are you doing compared to the next guy. Are you simply putting in the best effort all the time? Are you working your hardest all the time? You cannot fool yourself. And that's so important, important for us in the recruiting process. What else? What else makes a good player? Yes? Intelligence. Intelligence. Anybody that comes to mind? Immediately shy of me, but he's been said a lot. Very, very, very intelligent. Your ability to see the game, your ability to discern, and discern is simply making decisions on the field that are best for the team at that time. He is so good at it. We once watched a game. They had a friendly that they were playing in Barcelona. We saw the clips of it. How many passes was it? 